Ding. Greetings, fools. I bet you forgot I was still in the hospital after falling off that baby Moffat roof. Did you think they were just going to phase me out and never mention me again? Well, you thought wrong. And, thankfully, someone sent me this lovely beatbox as a get well soon gift. So I even have something to review today from the comfort of my bed on the evil Skeletoys. This here is a Transformers G1 reissue Blastor. It's a Walmart exclusive, so it's quite shocking that it was even in stock for purchase. Well, not exactly the same as the original box, the package here is very similar to the original, with art by Mark Watts, if I am not mistaken. Let me know in the comments below. It's got the tech spec file card here with energy graph thing. It does not come with the red plastic piece to read this thing better. But seriously, it's not like you can't read it anyway. But I suspect Hasbro wants you to buy an Earthrise figure too. And then you can use the decoder plastic from that. Sure, just take all my currency. Anyway, I don't have in my possession a G1 Blastor, but I do have a Transformers Universe Blastor that we can compare. If memory serves, this was a shared exclusive between San Diego Comic-Con and Fan Expo in the year 2010. If my memory did not serve, then let me know in the comments below. So here we got a slipcase cover. It's shiny, sparkly. Ooh, whoa, pretty trippy. Lay off the ambrosia, hippie. It slides out at the bottom. Transformers Universe box design, as was the style at the time. Front of the box opens to reveal Blastor and a bunch of cassettes. What are cassettes, you children may be asking? They played music in the 80s with a superior sound quality, the likes of which the world may never hear again. And you've ruined it with your WMVs and your GPSs, Zoom players. Damn kids and your music. <sighs> anyway, here's some side-by-side -side shots. You can see lots of differences here. I should not have to spell it out for your feeble minds to comprehend. I am also not going to review the cassettes here. As you can see, one Blastor comes with them, the other does not. So let's take a closer look and compare the Blastors. Autobots, convert and roll out! Now I am not sure if the camera can see the subtle differences, but it appears to my eye sockets that the new reissue figure on the right leans towards a slightly more tinge of brown in the plastic around the speakers, whereas the 2010 release seems to lean slightly more towards grey. The rest of the colors look the same to my peeper holes. The plastic also seems to have a bit of a sparkle to it. Initially, I thought the 2010 release had more sparkles, but on closer inspection, I cannot tell. They appear to be pretty close. Both cassette doors pop open with the push of a button. Even the 2010 one still works. Sometimes the pressure of springs on old plastic makes it crumble. So store this with the door open and keep your rat traps and pterosaurs in beast mode, kids. Different numbers on the back here, but otherwise they are nearly identical. Now spin, spin, spin those funky beats, you beatboxing fool. And of course, Blastor would not be complete without his Blastor. Why else would he be called Blastor? Both weapons appear to be identical, even the little number two stamped in them. So if you are a super nerd, don't mix them up. Now let's get these transformed. Good thing there are instructions. 
The 2010 instructions on the left show a few more steps than the current 2020 reissue instructions, but you can still figure it out. Both appear to use the same artwork as far as I can tell. Transformering contest! As already established, these two are very similar, but there are subtle differences. For example, most of the stickers appear identical, except for the shoulders, knees, and feet. The shoulder stickers on the 2010 release are a much lighter blue, and the triangle is outlined differently. Get that? Good. Next, what I call the knee stickers are different. The design on the 2010 release has more rounded edges, while the new Walmart re-release has sharper edges. And Blastor's feet are similar to the shoulders, with the 2010 release having a lighter shade of blue. The number of lines inside the blue and inside the red circle are also different. So there you have it. That's the kind of insignificant particulars that you nerds crave, is it not? Now... What do you mean he is mistransformed? Well, I'm not transforming him again. Do you know how long that stop motion took? Plus, I already filmed the last shot earlier today. I'm not going back to do it again. Fine! Take a shot and we'll put it here in post. There! Will that now settle your craving for perfection? Anyway, here's the last shot for the end, you boom! There's some reissue cassettes, a G1 Ravage, and some Siege cassettes for no particular reason. Now watch our video with Alan Oppenheimer from the menu, and then get out of here! Emmy!